Hello, uh, welcome to our Basics of Unity course. Uh, today we're just going to be going over the basics that you'll need to uh, get going. Right now we are on the Unity website, unity3d.com, and uh, specifically we're at Get Unity Download. If you just search Unity online, it might bring you straight to here. Uh, if you search Unity Hub, it will definitely bring you straight to here because that is how I got to this page, Unity Hub being what it says right here. Um, and the way that we download Unity is a little different than when you just download another program. Uh, Unity is kind of strange in that you really need to be able to handle lots of different versions of it on your one machine if you do development with it. And uh, because of that, they have given us this system called Unity Hub that lets you manage all of your different installs of Unity. So all of the different versions that you're going to be getting over the course of your time using Unity. Uh, so to get Unity Hub, it's very simple. We uh, click the Unity Hub, download Unity Hub button. Uh, one thing that might expedite this process, by the way, is uh, if you make a Unity account, uh, I believe I'm signed in right now, but you can just uh, make an account through the Unity website. Uh, if not, it's going to guide you through making an account when you try to open up Unity Hub, I believe. So anyways, if I click U Unity, download Unity Hub, it'll give us an install. Uh, I cannot install Unity Hub, I already have it, but if you click that, it should bring you through a wizard. You can install it wherever you want, choose the different folders to place things into, and uh, uh, it may even ask for an account to set it up with. Again, uh, it should give you means to set up your Unity account. Uh, that account will be essential for this. And we're going to be using Unity um, Personal Edition uh, since that is free for everyone. So yeah, when it asks you what type of account, make sure to do that one. So uh, I'm just going to clear this out so you can see it. Let's go to what Unity Hub looks like though. And uh, you wouldn't have all of these projects here, but uh, once you get Unity Hub open, it will look something like this. So, uh, again, this is kind of like our hub that we use for uh, accessing our Unity projects that we make, for uh, installing new versions of Unity. Uh, they even, I guess, they have tutorials in here and other stuff now. I've never even seen these. Yeah. They keep adding new features to this all the time. But today, what we're concerned with is uh, installing Unity, because right, right now we have the hub, which lets us get different versions of Unity installed onto our computer. Uh, but right now for you, you probably don't have anything when you click on this button right here, projects, or, or sorry, when you click on installs, uh, you probably have it empty here. So uh, in order to get Unity, we need to go to install editor. And from there, uh, you can choose a, a version. I highly, highly recommend getting the current long-term long -term support version of uh, Unity 2020. So right now that would be this top one that it shows. Um, I find that uh, if you're using the one for the year you're in, or even I guess at this point the year prior to you, uh, you're going to have a lot of bugs you run into. It's not really a finished piece of software until it goes into long-term support. So I highly recommend uh, just snagging that 2020 LTS. And it's simple. You just click install. Um, it asks you for different things. If you don't have Visual Studio installed, you're going to want to check it so that you make sure you get it. Um, and you're going to want to choose your different platforms that you may be building for. So uh, in this case, let's say you wanted to build uh, just apps for your PC. Um, I typically recommend grabbing Universal Windows Platform Build and IL2 CPP. Um, they, this, is, this is also the combo you would use if you wanted to uh, develop for uh, the HoloLens, for instance. Uh, but let's say you wanted to develop for the, the Quest. Uh, you would also want to turn on Android Build Support and uh, these features and stuff. I think you can actually just leave it with just Android Build Support, though. Yeah. Um, and then you'd go through the install. I'm not going to do that right now. It will take a lot of time in this video that we're trying to keep short. But that's all it is. You just click install. Um, you can choose the place that it installs them to. Uh, but I don't believe you choose it here uh, unless they've changed it. You go into preferences. You go 
to installs and you can choose where it's going to place them. You can even choose where it puts the, the downloads before it gets installed. Yeah, so anyway, let's say you've now uh, installed it, sat through the <laughs> fairly long installation time and you have everything in, you got the Visual Studio installed, all of those parts that it wants to give you and you're good to go. So you'll probably see one version sitting right here. And you can see in these tags underneath uh, what uh, build platforms are supported that you have downloaded for it. You can always go add new ones. I can just click the gear, I can add modules, and that will let me add new uh, parts to it. Okay, so now that we have it installed, we need to go make a new project. So to make a project in Unity, it's simple. We click on the projects tab in Unity Hub, and we go to the top right corner where it says new project. So I'm going to click that. And this will give us, uh, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff showing up. First, up top, you'll see the editor version. If you had different versions of Unity installed, you're going to uh, be able to choose different ones that you may want um, for different projects. Some, you know, you might run into a, a piece of software that you want to use, you know, maybe some computer vision thing, maybe something else that's like, oh, we only work for Unity, a blah, blah, blah version. And so you'd install that version and you could change that up here. Um, there's a bunch of different templates to start with, but in pretty much all circumstances, I just use the plain 3D one. Um, I don't recommend using the VR core one. I have uh, been warned by others that it's not worth it. Um, you just go with 3D to start. Uh, there's a cup if you are building a full scale like game or something where you need it to look super graphically accurate and intense you would select hdrp so these are render pipelines 3d uses the uh, universal render pipeline which basically means it'll run on anything you could run this on a phone you could run it on a computer you could run on anything uh, but if you wanted to run something on a really strong computer or a console you would choose the HD, like high definition render pipeline, basically. Um, that is not our use case today. So all you have to do is just have 3D selected. And you'll see we've got a little menu over here on the right. Uh, we can make a name for our project. I'm going to call it Unity Demo Show Case. I don't know. And it'll go default to a folder that you've already selected, but you can choose a different place to put it. And I'm going to create a project. And now is the part where typically in a workshop, I would wait uh, to take questions because uh, it's going to take a bit to build your project. But uh, let's see. I think I'll just uh, skip here and uh, we'll get back when the uh, Unity has opened. Okay, so uh, we've opened Unity. Uh, you'll notice, uh, since I didn't just install the latest version, it gives me a warning every time on if, I've, if I want to install the new version. For now, I'm just going to ignore it. Uh, here is Unity. So again, Unity is a uh, 3D game engine, or I just call it like a 3D application engine. You can use this to make any kind of 3D software in a fairly intuitive way. And so now let's go over the uh, all of the parts of this interface. You can see, you know, there's tabs everywhere, buttons, nonsense. Uh, let's make sense of it. So I always think it's best to start with the scene tab. So ignore this stuff over here on the left. The scene tab is what is selected right now. And the scene tab means uh, the basically what's in our app or game world. We can look around in this world by right clicking on the window and moving our cursor around. We can move around in this window <clears throat> by either zooming in and out with the scroll wheel or what I like to do is if you right click you can move around you can fly around with WASD, like the controls that you might find in a first-person shooter game. 
Uh, maybe you can move around with the arrow keys? Nope. Yeah, it's just WASD. So, that's how it is. Uh, so yes, this is the scene. Think of this as we're looking at what is in our world right now. Right now, we only have two objects. A camera, which is how we, the person who's viewing the game will see the world. And we also have a light source, which is just putting light out into the world. It's not, it's not like a flashlight. These aren't rays shining down in this direction. It's more of something being applied to the whole world. Um, so if we wanted to see what it looks like from the perspective of the player, we would click on this next tab called the game tab. So when we click that, you can see this is what it looks like from the view of the camera. Ignore this asset store tab, it is deprecated. <laughs> uh, the, but I guess it is important to mention the asset store is a really, really helpful tool when making things in Unity. Uh, all of the plugins, all of the you know resources, different things, you'll find them on the asset store, uh, which you can do by just clicking this button. It'll open up a window, voila. And uh, in this Chrome window, you can go and search for different things. I tend, I use this pack a lot, World Materials Free. Um, yeah, the the asset store is a great place. We're not really gonna cover much on it today, but I just wanted to show you that this is a place you can go to get uh, assets and different materials and things for uh, the stuff that you're making in Unity. In Unity. Um, importantly, you do need to have a Unity account to use it, so, okay back to unity. So we've made it past the asset store tab. This tab should might even be gone in the version of unity you're using. I'm not sure. All right. So now, uh, taking a look back into our scene, let's look at this panel, uh, over here on the right. This is the inspector. So what it basically is, is, uh, if you are looking at an object, so let's say I click on the camera, we can see all of the pieces that make up what a camera object is. These pieces are called components in Unity, and that's an important word uh, to uh, get used to hearing, I guess, because it's, it's going to be a lot of what goes on in Unity is you'll make an object and add components to it. We see down here there is an add component button, and you could use it to basically type in different kinds of components you want to add and uh, put one on. So right now, when we're looking at the camera, we can see that it has a transform component, a camera component, and an audio listener component. Uh, the Let's do these in reverse order. Audio listener means that when audio events occur, the camera hears them, because it's listening. Uh, the camera has the camera component basically turns this object into a camera. This is what makes this object be a camera rather than being, I don't know, a light source or something. Um, and very importantly, we have the transform component. Uh, this is something you're going to be messing with a lot, and I will show you in a moment just how it works. But this defines the position, rotation, and the scale uh, in XYZ dimensions, 3D space of your objects. So if I was to move the camera around, you'll see that the position changes. Cool. So anyway, so now let's move on to this panel to the left. Uh, this is the hierarchy tab. And this is a very important space. Uh, it's on first glance, it's going to look like a list of all of the objects in the scene. So if I click, you'll see we have a camera that we can click, and we have our directional light that we can click. And when we select them, we get to, uh, you know, it selects them inside of the scene, selects them inside of, uh, it shows them up in the inspector because they are selected. So let's add an object real quick, just uh, to kind of show you uh, what we can do with objects. So I'm going to go to the top here where it says game object. Click on that. And go to here. Let me turn on a uh, highlighting. So now it's going to highlight all my clicks for you. All right. Uh, I'm going to go to 3d object. I'm going to go to cube. Cool. So now we have a cube just chilling here. 
All right, we can see that its, it's uh, location is here. I think I'm going to zero its location. You can do that by, uh, there's a bunch of different ways to manipulate the transform in Unity. We can type things in, zero. We can uh, drag this slider. If you grab the letter, you can drag side to side. And you'll see that I'm adjusting the Y. Uh, if I wanted to adjust the transform, I could also drag on these handles. Uh, ju just FYI, sometimes these handles don't show up. If these handles aren't showing up for you, uh, what's happening is up top we have these tools, and it means that your move tool is not selected. Whatever tool you have selected, you'll see as I click these, it determines the handles that show up. And all of these handles, all that they do is give you different ways of manipulating the transform. Uh, I tend to just leave it like this so that I can see a little bit of information but not have my screen filled with lines. But uh, it's up to you. This gives you the most control. For instance, uh, if I drag on this square here, I can adjust the scale along that axis as well. So it does give you a lot of control. Right, I'm going to switch back to this one for now, though, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, you can notice, actually, right now, that the lighting direction uh, is pointing onto the cube in the fashion that it points down. So it's kind of like a light source was shining from infinitely far away up there. You can kind of see it. And uh, it's lighting this cube. Okay, so anyways, we've added a cube to our scene. And, uh, you know, let's add another object. Let's uh, go to uh, game object, 3D object, once more. Going to add a capsule. Uh, let's look a little bean. It's actually a fairly large bean. Let's get it closer to us. I'm just going to zero these. Fast shortcut to zero things is you click these three dots next to transform and click reset. That'll save you a lot of time. It sets all of these to zero and sets all of these to one. So let's get this over here near our cube. And uh, I can use these to walk you through why this tab is called hierarchy. So right now, again, I said it, it on first glance, it just looks like a list, right? Just a list of all the objects that are here. We can click on them. We can select them. Um, and uh, you know, these are all the objects in our scene. If we go to game view, you can see all of the objects that are in our scene back to scene. So let's answer the question of why it's called a hierarchy though. So um, if we take capsule and we drop it, so I'm grabbing it, I'm clicking on it, and I'm dropping it onto cube, you'll see now it's underneath it. What this means is capsule is called a child of cube. And all that that means is any changes we make to the transform of cube will also be applied to capsule. So for instance, let's say I wanted to make capsule real wide, right? I'm gonna drag its scale on the Z axis. You know, make them pancake. I'll drag the scale on the X axis out. Woo! We can, you know, we can do weird stuff to to our capsule, but you'll see it's not affecting the cube. This is because it is the child, and the child gets to kind of do things independently of the parent. But when we manipulate the parent cube, all of the children get changed as well. So you'll see now if I stretch the cube vertically like this, it also stretches the capsule. And a good way to think about this is uh, just to think about why it is this way. Let's say you were making a character and you wanted to give it, you know, arms and legs that move around, right? Well, if our arms and legs were all separate objects of this character and they wouldn't move around together, then, you know, we have our player move forward or something it would, they'd leave their arms behind unless we were like, every time you move forward, also move arm forward, also move this forward, right? So the idea is uh, you get to make parts that act uh, as pieces of a whole 
parent object. So all of the children move around with the uh, parent object. Uh, one really common use, if I unparent this real quick, a really, really common use of this is if I, uh, let's set this back to neutral, bring it kind of over here. If I put the camera uh, inside or near, don't think it's inside yet, is it? Let's take a peek. Oh, it should be inside. Oh, it's staring at the <laughs> it's staring at the brick. <laughs> Let's move the cube out of the way, or just move it further away or something. Okay, so you'll see when we select the camera, we can see the view again. Uh, a very common uh, thing that's done is, let's say we had our player that was here, and this was their body, right? We would want to make it so that the camera moves with the player. So when I move the player around, see the camera moves with them because the camera is a child of the player. So, yeah, that's the idea. That's, that's why it's called hierarchy. It's... Uh, describing the parent-child relationship. And your children can have children and all of the, you know, it can just go endless chain, just go down. But yeah, this is why it is called the hierarchy tab. And this is important to grasp. Uh, this is just kind of a core part of how Unity works. Okay, we are almost done. On to the final, final thing. There's still two tabs we haven't touched yet. So let's do that real quick. First, we have project. Think of project as your file explorer. So, you know, in Windows or in Mac, I think it's called Explorer there too. I don't remember what it's called in Mac actually, but the, the idea stays the same. It's what you use to look at files, you know? So it's just like this, except uh, it's in Unity and uh, it kind of has its own file system. You'll have this assets folder. That's where everything that uh, is a component, or not a component, it's it, everything that is an asset that you could put into your game will be in the assets folder. So you maybe I make a color that I want to put onto something, or uh, I download some scripts or something. They're probably all going to be in assets. Uh, they could be in packages, um, but really all of the things you'll typically interact with that you might drag and drop in will be within the assets folder. So yeah, it, it's literally a file explorer. You can see under scenes, we have our scene that we're in right now. Um, I'm gonna save our scene so I don't mess things up. I just saved it with control S, you know? Yeah, okay. Uh, finally, there is the console tab. This is uh, real simple. It is a console. <laughs> it is a readout. If you were to run the game, let's let's try running it. Let's see what happens. Uh, to run, I click play. And this is what our game would look like right now. We haven't told our camera to do anything. It's just chilling there, staring at a white wall. <laughs> That's my favorite game. Uh, <laughs> so we've got a, a little reading coming up here just saying that there's a... Uh, Visual Studio Editor package they'd like me to update, but that's it. Uh, it doesn't seem that we got any other notices. Uh, you may get a red one here if there's a, an error or a bug. And uh, otherwise, we'll probably get some things into this mark that looks like a exclamation point. Um, and you can toggle them on and off, by the way. So I can toggle the yellow ones on and off. But this just means like a this exclamation point one means like a uh sorry the speech bubble one uh means just a normal message and uh typically whenever you're running anything especially code that's pre-made you're going to get a couple of messages in here just saying things are running as normal you know uh yada yada this has gone on this has gone on and it's also really important the the main use of the console the only time i click over here is Let's say I'm making some code and I need to debug it, or I'm making a, uh, I'm making something happen. I need to debug. Well, I don't know where the thing is going wrong. I'll tell the code to print something like, uh, you know, when I tell you turn left, print turn left to console, and then it would push it. It would put it right here. So this is kind of 
a tool for you to use when you're debugging any code or things that you're making. So yeah, that's what the console is for. And that is Unity. Yeah, so uh, uh, that should be enough for you to kind of understand the basics of how this works. Uh, for today, this is it. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, see you in the next one. See ya.